What is up guys, back again with another UFC prediction video. This week we got Joe Pfeiffer versus Jack the Joker Hermanson. Good matchup in the middleweight division. And we've been doing pretty good with the main event predictions so far. We've gotten the first three of this year correct. We've gotten the Magomed Ankalaev over Johnny Walker, DDP over Strickland, and just this past weekend, Imavov with the decision victory over Roman Delidze. Predicted that one perfectly as well with the decision win. So looking to make it four in a row here this week with Joe Pfeiffer versus Hermanson. And we're going to go ahead and break it down and make a prediction on it today. So with this middleweight matchup, Joe Pfeiffer versus Jack Hermanson, Joe Pfeiffer trying to propel himself into the rankings with a big win over the ranked number 10 in the middleweight division, Jack Hermanson. Quick tale of the tape here, Joe Pfeiffer, 27 years of age, 6'2", 75 inch reach, and then Jack Hermanson, 35 years of age, 6'1", 77 and a half inch reach. So slight reach advantage, but he definitely is the older fighter. More experience, but has been looking progressively slower recently. So we'll definitely have to take the age factor into consideration here in this fight. Joe Pfeiffer has a lot of more momentum on his side, five out of five in his last five fights. The last one he lost was basically just a fluke injury. He hurt his arm in the Contender Series, has been looking real good since then with wins over Mearshart, as well as Razak Al-Hassan in his most recent fight. And you can't really say the same for Hermanson. Lost his last fight to the plotty plotster Roman Delidze, who just lost to Amavov. So that loss definitely didn't age well for him. Beat Chris Curtis in a boring decision, to be honest. Lost to Sean Strickland. Beat Edwin Shabazian. And then before that, he lost to mediocre Marvin Vittori. So the levels of competition has definitely been higher, but he hasn't really excelled when he's been fighting these top caliber guys. And for my prediction, I think that Joe Pfeiffer is going to win. And Jack Hermanson does have a good ground game, but Joe Pfeiffer, he's no slouch on the ground. Just got a submission victory. He's very competent down there. I think this fight will mostly take place on the feet, which is where Joe Pfeiffer will have the advantage. I just don't think that Jack Hermanson's really going to be able to have any way to get Joe Pfeiffer to the ground without encountering a lot of danger on the feet. And this is basically Joe Pfeiffer's opportunity to prove that he can take on a contender in the middleweight division and rise up the ranks. Jack Hermanson, he's kind of been like a win one, lose one with his last few fights. Hasn't really kept his momentum going that he got when he was first rising up in the division. So Joe Pfeiffer is just going to try and put a nail in the coffin of Jack Hermanson's contendership aspirations and everything along those lines. I think Joe Pfeiffer is going to smoke him. That's my official prediction. I think Joe Pfeiffer is going to KO him in round one viciously. He's a hungry, hungry man salty as it gets if you watched his interview with joe rogan on the jre podcast super super touching he went through a lot of adversity as a young man and to be able to get to where he is now it takes a lot of heart and i cannot pick against somebody who has come up from that type of situation he just has an aggression he has a grit that i don't think jack hermanson who Kind of likes to stay on the back foot and pitter pat kick at range like Chris Gutierrez. I don't think he's going to be able to deal with it because the reason he was able to beat Chris Curtis is because Chris Curtis is more of a counter striker anyway. He's not really going to be able to pressure you super effectively. Joe Pfeiffer is a lot better at implementing effective aggression. Really good boxing compared to Jack Hermanson who has good kicks when he's on the feet but I've never really seen anything that has impressed me with the hands, especially on the defensive side. He doesn't really have any answer for when he's getting combinations thrown at him. I think Joe Pfeiffer, if he just puts like three, four piece combinations together instead of just throwing pop shots, he will definitely be able to land on the chin of Hermanson, who, as he's getting older, 35 years of age, significantly slower, like I mentioned. Joe Pfeiffer, he's not electrically fast in his own right, but he definitely has a lot more fast twitch ability, much more explosiveness than Jack Hermanson does. And I think he's going to be able to grit down on the mouthpiece, walk through the pitter pack kicks, and then just put leather on the chin of Jack Hermanson and put him out in round one. 
his kick defense does bother me a little bit because he does get kicked a lot and he kind of just blocks it with his arms or he tries to just turn his foot out a little bit to check calf kicks. He doesn't really check it the correct way. So some of the times it can still land with a bit of impact, but I really don't think that the kicks of Jack Hermanson is going to slow down Pfeiffer in any measure to where it's going to prevent him from getting the victory. I'm going Joe Pfeiffer by KO, just purely imposing his will, biting down on the mouthpiece, remembering all of his childhood trauma and putting that on the chin of Jack Hermanson. Yeah, I think Joe Pfeiffer is going to roll up Jack the Joker Hermanson and smoke him like a joint, to be honest. Whenever there's a fight like this, except for in very rare occasions, the young up-and-comer almost always beats the old dog that's been kind of just floating around the division, winning one, losing one here and there, kind of just like your average 500-level fighter. The up-and-comer almost always wins, so I'm kind of just going with the norm for this pick, not looking too deeply into it with all the X's and O's and stuff like that. I think Joe Pfeiffer is just simply going to be able to be a much more physically imposing presence than the last few opponents that Jack Hermanson has fought because when he got the win over Chris Curtis, Chris Curtis is also a lot shorter than Hermanson and Pfeiffer are, and Pfeiffer is taller. He's 6'2", so he has a slight height advantage. So Jack Hermanson isn't going to be able to just utilize his reach like he always likes to. Joe Pfeiffer is going to be able to match him in that regard, and I think that's going to give him an advantage on the feet to be able to impose his boxing and really deal a lot of damage to Jack Hermanson on the feet. And it's been a year since Hermanson's even been in the cage. Joe Pfeiffer, three months ago, fresh off a win. I think all the arrows are pointing at Joe Pfeiffer to get a big win here and propel himself into the top 15 of the middleweight division. That is my prediction for this fight. And I'm really liking the state of the middleweight division. It has vastly improved from where it was three, four years ago when we had the likes of Marvin Vittori getting title shots, Derek Brunson being in the top five. Thankfully, we've gotten a lot better contenders rising up the ranks, entertaining fighters, giving us good matchups. Thankfully, the middleweight division is a lot healthier than it was in the past few years. If Joe Pfeiffer wins this matchup, I'd like to see him maybe fight Roman DeLidze, get him out of the rankings for good. That'd be a satisfying victory for Joe Pfeiffer to get. Maybe he could fight the loser of Allen and Vittori. I think that would also be a good option for the next fight for Joe Pfeiffer if he wins. Or maybe give him the winner of Paul Craig and Cal Barajo. I think that would also be a fight that could be a good option for Joe Pfeiffer going forward. If Jack, or if Jack Hermanson manages to win or if he loses, maybe you could give him the Iron Turtle. Maybe you could give him Michelle Pereira. Maybe you could give him Roman Kopulov if he beats Fluffy at 298. But I think those are just some matchups that I would like to see. The middleweight division, thankfully, has a lot more exciting fighters in it than it used to. So we're actually able to play around and think about some good matchups that we can get in this division. But that is my take. I think Joe Pfeiffer is going to destroy Jack Hermanson and get one of those matchups in the future. The one I'd probably like to see most, honestly, would be the loser of Marvin Vittori and uh, Allen. I think either one of those fights would be really good for Joe Pfeiffer. Marvin Vittori, basically a really good gatekeeper at 185, so I think that the UFC would probably go that direction. In terms of betting odds for the main event, Joe Pfeiffer has swollen to about a minus 240 favorite. Jack Hermanson at plus 200 as the underdog. I did bet Joe Pfeiffer at minus 200 like when the line first came out because I knew that all the money would be coming in on him and that the price would rise. But if you can get him around, you know, minus 200, minus 210, I think it's a decent play there. Pretty good pick for the main event of the evening. Good co-main event as well for this fight night card. Dan Ige versus Andre Philly. I did unfortunately get the co-main event wrong last week, predicting Drew Dever to KO Moicano, but Moicano ended up implementing the trips and the ground control really well. Even though Drew Dever was looking good on the feet, the decision kind of got out of reach for him and Moicano won with the ground control by decision and had a very, very funny 
post-fight interview, but we're going to try and right that wrong today. I'm going to go ahead and say that Dan Ige will win by decision. He's like a minus 170 favorite in this fight. Andre Philly is a plus 140 underdog, and I think that's about right. Dan Ige, even though he's been a win one, lose one type of guy, Andre Philly has been the same way to a certain extent, just at a lower level of competition. So even though Dan Ige is coming off of a loss, the loss predominantly was just grappling from Bryce Mitchell, and Dan Ige didn't really have an answer for it. But I think Dan Ige has good striking. I think he outstrikes most featherweights. So I think he's going to be able to coast to a pretty smooth decision victory here over Philly and get the win in the co-main event of the evening. I'm not going to do the rest of the card predictions because I'm sure y'all don't want to hear that right now from me. Once I get a better setup and grow the channel and everything like that, I will be doing full card predictions. But until then, I'm just going to be doing the fights that interest me, most likely the co-main and main event. For the pay-per-views, though, I will be doing a full main card prediction for 298. So look forward to that. Thank you guys for watching the video and have a great rest of your day. Let me know who you guys got in the comments below.